What are the, so how does this tech innovation help with that? I mean, so you're doing the virtual simulation. What are you showing? Right, well, I wanna take a step back a little bit. So when we're building the simulation program, we have two types of simulations. We have in-person simulation, and we've extended it to virtual reality. I'm gonna talk about both of them. So in our in-person simulation, we build a course, um, we do team training, so it includes the entire team, not just our physicians, our midwives, our nurses, residents training, and we really want to have everyone know their role when a, an event happens that isn't what we would expect. So it's a rare event, but it can be life-threatening and catastrophic. And the whole point of simulation is to practice in you know, not the acute scenario so that, um, so that y your blood pressure might be a little bit lower, you're a little bit calmer, and hopefully you can think about what steps you need to do to address this when it's not a life-threatening situation. People can practice. The thing that sometimes hampers in-person simulation is that you have to plan a lot of times around the schedules of the providers. So if things are busy on the labor floor or it's the middle of the night or whenever, it may be difficult to get the whole team together to really enact that. We want everyone to go through this training. So the wonderful thing about virtual reality is that one person can train by themselves. Wow. Yeah. So That's you, incredible. It is, it is. I had never put on a pair of goggles until we developed our virtual reality simulation. I was like, whoa, this is what, this is what the kids were talking about. <laughs> so um, so we, we put a, um, a lifelike scenario um, and you know, to back up, providers, when you're, when you're launching a simulation, we do the didactic teaching first. So maybe a grand round or you have people read something you assess their knowledge base, um, you develop the course so that people will then do the actions that you want them to go through when faced with the situation. And so then what you're doing by the simulation in a safe environment, so people feel safe to engage, it's not punitive, you don't want anyone to feel badly if they don't do what, they, you know, what you'd like them to do. You want people to practice and get it hardwired so that when these never events do happen, they can then give you the right course of action that you want. And one of the neat things that we did, um, because we have such a diverse patient population, um, for both our in-person and in the virtual reality space, we built our patients to look like the patients we serve. So we were the first um, hospital, hospital system in the country to get black high fidelity mannequins that's what we use for our in-person simulations. And um, in the virtual reality space, we worked with another company and we said, hey, we'd like you to build this so that it reflects the patients that we serve. And so we have our patient, we built the scenario so that there's a partner in the room, you have the team there. And unfortunately, with the virtual simulation part, you don't necessarily feel what you're doing, but the room is so lifelike, you, you can't walk around because you might actually walk into a wall with the goggles on because you can't see. Um, but you are asking for certain interventions to be done and then um, the figures in the, in the scenario will do them. And it must take